Hello, Ken Spriggs here uh, with a continuation of my build of my discovery that I last left off on part nine. Um, it's been several months because I had shifted over to some other models for Wonderfest uh, and did some other projects. So um, I actually have quite a bit done on the discovery and a lot of footage that I filmed. Uh, mostly I began by doing some additional painting on the outside of the ship using a mask set from Aztec Dummy, which I will show here in the future. Uh, but I also worked on a pod that I got from Shapeways, which is incredibly amazing. It has an interior. It has a little figure of Dave Bowman seated inside of it and a figure of uh, the dead Frank Pohl in the claws of it as well. Uh, and it's also hollowed out with channels for lighting with fiber optics and, and SMDs, which I'm going to do. So um, I decided to go ahead and I was able to finish that up and reach a nice stopping point with the pod. So I'm going to go ahead and show that part here. And then the next video, I will go back to uh, looking at the outside of the ship, some modifications that I did to it, and also doing the painting with a paint mask. So, all right. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so in the meantime, I've decided to go ahead and start working on uh, this pod, which is going to be outside of the ship. Uh, recreating the scene where um, uh, Dave returns to the ship and how locks him out and he has the body of Frank and the claws of the pod uh, because how killed him um, so there there's a pod that's there's two pods one that's going to be fixed inside of the pod bay one that's removable on an extended platform that I showed in previous videos and then this one which is outside of the ship so this is a really, really awesome version of the pod that I got from Shapeways. It has multiple parts and an interior with controls, as you can see, which is really awesome. Not quite sure how much of that is going to be able to be lit up, but it does have an interior, which you can see in through an open cockpit window, well, portal window. It's even designed to be able to light up the little how in the center of this. It's hard to get a focus on it. But you can see there's a hole right there in the front where that slides over so you can have light coming through or fiber optic really. The, um, the headlights are, are all drilled out, already pre-hollowed. Pre and then they come down to come on, focus in. Let me make it a little bit closer here. Okay, so they come down into these little hollowed out circles, these channels, as you can see. So you can see the holes there going in through the headlights. sure where the hole for how it goes I'll have to play with that but they come in into this bottom part and then this bottom part has a piece that has the normal look on the bottom but it has a hole for the wiring it goes up inside to these two little tubes which obviously match up with those sections inside there so then you would run some wiring through those little uh, little rectangles on the back and put some lights into this. And I guess it would do pretty much all the lighting because it would it would illuminate. This is cast and clear. I put a, a light coat of um, Tamiya Fine Service Primer on it to see the, the parts a little better. But um, it would light up those two sections so right above that are the controls 
so I could have some light a little bit come through there and scratch off some of the some of the paint out to paint it black and scratch off some of the paint and then run fiber optics down through all these holes and probably just uh, have them end right there on the inside so that the bigger lid so I'll have to play with that a little bit of sanding I'll have to do like you can see the the rough lines on this right here I started to sand it but like the side pieces here have a little bit of rough parts so okay but let me show you the rest of it so of course here's the, the top that just goes on really nicely and it likewise has detail on the inside which is kind of cool you're not going to see a ton of it but it's pretty cool you're going to see inside there and you're definitely going to see the figures so here's the figure of dave very tiny he does not have his helmet on of course which he would not And I still have some parts on the tree. I have the, the figure of uh, Frank in his pose. There's the claws. I don't think I'm going to use theirs because in all the pods I built in the past that I used either resin or um, 3D printed, they're, they're just too fragile. And they've always broken off. I've ended up using the, um, the photo etch, which is a lot stronger. And I do have some from, I uh, believe, the Green Strawberry, which I'll probably use and have it open with, um, with Frank and the claws of it. Uh, another feature which I think is really, really cool, which makes it a lot easier to paint, is that on the, uh, the side collars, or the, the ear mops, or whatever you call them, there are several parts that are black and most of it's white. So usually what you're doing is going in and either using a decal like I did with the green strawberry or painting it really delicately. But the way they've designed it is they made all the black parts as pieces that are built into this part. Then the, the side mops are open in all those pieces. You can see they snap over it. So all I would do is paint this white, paint all those parts black after I finish painting the rest of this snap these over it and then it's just gonna be black showing through nicely done where it's supposed to be so really brilliant design um, the person who makes these on on um, shapeways I'll, I'll put the link in the description um, I bought other ones uh, from him and he's made fantastic ones and keeps keeps making them better and better and better so this is the best one I've seen yet, and there's different versions that are also available, but really, really cool and really detailed. So, all right. So um, let me start playing with a little bit of lights and some fiber optics and try to see how that might work out. Uh, possibly get a little bit of black paint on the inside so I can get an idea of what I'm going to try to light as far as, like, the controls. Um, as far as that, too. So, okay. All right, so... I put some flat black onto the interior of the, the Shapeways pod. And I just have a, a cool white um, chip SMD wired up to AA battery. I'm not going to be using that size, um, but I have some other ones on order right now that are going to fit in here. I think probably a, um, uh, what's the next size down from the chip? Not Pico or Pica. I'll have to look and see, but I have some ordered. Uh, so what I did was I just took an X-Acto knife and I just lightly scraped a few little spots, as you can see, on the controls so that the light is sticking through the, um, you're shining through the black paint. And then what I can do is just take some clear Tamiya's and just paint some on there. Uh, I'm not looking for screen accuracy, but when you're looking through the, the uh, window, you'll be able to see a little bit uh, of some color lit up underneath for the controls and that sort of thing. Only other thing I'm thinking of having inside is a little teeny, um, maybe a Z LED red, very tiny, maybe have it up on the top, we'll see. So it gets like a, a red glow 
And other than that, uh, I'm gonna look at some some images of it and try to paint a little bit of more color in it, but nothing major. Um, other than I know most of the control panel just stays black, other than the colors on it. So, okay, uh, but that's looking pretty cool. Let me get get some colors on that, and we'll see how that's gonna look. All right, so there we go. So I did put in some different color Tamiya's clears. It looks kind of rough from here, but you're not going to see much of it. You're only going to see through that tiny little window in the front of the um, little oval window in the front. So you're not going to see too much, but it does give the impression of having some, some controls on. Let me go ahead and put the, um, put the top on temporarily. We'll take a look and see what that's going to look like from that little window. All right, and there it is with the um, with the top on temporarily. So you can tell that there's some lights in it. I'm gonna need to do some more light blocking on the front so you can't see the, the light right there, that really bright part in front of it. Uh, Cause the only light in the front is gonna be coming out through the little thing for how, which I'm gonna use a fiber optic. And that's gonna go through and come out underneath like the other ones but I do need to um, to block the rest of that light from coming through but that's gonna look pretty cool and then the figure is gonna be in there too so you're not gonna see a whole lot of that but it certainly gives you the idea that there is some controls that there are some controls and they're lit up so okay so that's pretty cool I might touch that up some more in the future we'll see once I get uh, the figure of Dave painted and put in see what I can see. So I got in my order of electronics from Evan Designs that I'm going to need to finish lighting this up. I showed some stills prior to this showing the different LED sizes and the colors that they offer from Evan Designs. Uh, they're a really good provider of electronics, lights, uh, switches, wiring, battery compartments, uh, fiber optic, a lot of different things, specialty ones. There are other manufacturers of these out there that other people talk about and like, but they've always been my go-to and I really like their products. And uh, they also do some custom stuff, which I've had them do for me as well. So I got some nano sized SMDs that are gonna work in this particular part. And um, my goal here was to make sure that I had something that would fit into this little channel, the little part here in the front sticking out that I wouldn't have to modify these at all. Uh, and also when they're on, I'll show you here in a second, because this is translucent, sorry for the shakiness at this scale, but this whole little cylinder lights up. And so it will give a lot of light right out in front of it where the ends of the fiber optics are going to be going out to the headlights into the how. And it also have a lot of light going up through the control panel to light up uh, the parts that I scraped off and used some clear Tamiya's on. So I went ahead and got a coating of flat black onto the pod to do some initial light blocking. And let me show you here in a moment, but it's I'm gonna need a little bit more because there's still some light leaking through and, uh, and kind of give you an idea of how that's working. So let me put that in there. And this piece obviously just slides right up into that little circular opening. You just wanna make sure that those two cylinder openings in the front are facing towards the front because that's where the, the fiber optics are gonna be. So let me go ahead and put that on and I'll show you how that's gonna look. All right, so there we go. Well, obviously the bottom is gonna to need to be painted. I haven't gotten to that part yet. Uh, but I'm seeing some areas where I'm going to have to do some light blocking. Just some little parts like that little grab handle right there behind it, it's coming through. There's some other parts on the back and some other areas. 
Uh, what I really like is you can see how even without the fiber optics, you're getting some nice glow through those channels where the headlights are gonna be. And also the little howl there in the middle. Uh, it's also lighting up in the two little center parts where the arms go in, but they're gonna be glued in place and they're gonna be painted. So you're not gonna see that light coming through. So, but I should have plenty of light once I get the fiber optics and they're, the ends are right up against the lights on the inside, it's gonna glow through really nicely. And then just like I showed previously, you can see the controls in there. Some more light leaks over there on the right side. So what I'm gonna do now is I wanna go ahead and get some silver over top of the black. I don't wanna gum up the detail with too much black. And silver is also a very good light blocking color. In addition, silver is a lot easier to paint white over when I want to put the final coat than black because obviously black is really hard to paint white over. So let me get and work on that. Uh, so I think this is going to be just fine. Those two lights obviously are going to be plenty to light up these parts I want. One additional light on the inside of a red Z LED in order to illuminate the interior. Uh, and then um, I'm going to start working on the figure of Dave and Frank as well. And then, well, Dave, first of all, because he's got to go on the inside. And then I can figure out how to paint everything else in there once I get that going. So, but looking really fantastic. So let me continue working on this. And uh, also work on an idea of how this is going to be attached onto the ship itself. All right, so I got a coating of chrome silver over top of the pod. And I had to go back and touch up a few spots. I might still have to do some more. Because the, uh, the whole pod is printed in translucent resin, it's light, obviously, transmitting through the whole, the whole pod. I still have to paint that bottom. As you can see, it's very translucent. So the silver worked pretty well. I did have to go back and touch up all the little grab hold parts because they are inset. And so they were really leaking some light. But other than that, it looks pretty good. Sorry. Let that completely dry. And then I can see about um, getting a coat of white paint over top of it. I do have to go ahead and touch up the little parts on these sides that'll stick through the side muffs and remain black. So I'll get those painted black as well. And then look at getting some, some light in the interior as well. So that's going to glow red. All right. All right, so quite a bit more painting onto the pod after I got the, the masking with the black and silver. So I painted red on the inside of the top part, which you're gonna see from the window. And I'll show you here in a second, the lighting I've come up with for it. Uh, I did mask off that black ring there, but got some overspray, so I'll have to touch that up a bit. Also, some of these parts, like these little parts here, are supposed to be silver, so I'll go back and put some silver in them. This little piece right here. I do have a decal set that I used on the other pods that I put in the interior that I got from Green Strawberry. Mainly it's that big door in the back and some other pieces, which is really cool. It really adds to it. Uh, and so I'll, I'll be using those on it. Uh, there were decals for the side moss, but it was mostly the black parts. So I don't think I'll necessarily be using them, but I will have to touch up certain things like those little circles there are silver possibly that little grooved area. I think that's supposed to be silver. We'll see. And then of course, paint these extruding nubs here black before I click on these parts to the sides. Uh, I also got a coat of white onto the arms, which um, they are kind of beefy, so we'll see. I'll give them a try. I've had some bad luck in the past with the 3D printed or resin versions, so I typically try to use the photo edge, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. 
Um, now, uh, I also went ahead and on the bottom piece, uh, I got some flat black and I put on some silver, chrome silver and let that dry. And then I'll get some, some white on that too. I wanted that to be light blocked since a lot of light was glowing out the bottom. I did tape around the two cylindrical parts where the lights go into because I want those to glow on the inside. So, okay. So what I did was I took, I had a red SMD and I was testing that at first, but one of the wires broke on it and I didn't have another one, but I did have a cool white Z SMD, which I went ahead and put on some clear red Tamiya to tint it. I've done this before, uh, which actually I think will work better because these ones don't have any resistors on it. The red ones have a little tiny resistor, which makes it a hassle to get it through any kind of tubing which is where this wiring all has to go. So let me turn that on. All right. So again, you know the drill. It's actually more red than it looks on camera. So it looks really good. And then what'll happen is when this is on, since it already has red on the inside and that light will definitely make it look really cool, like you can see right there. So it gives it that really nice, get on there really nice red glow. Now I don't want the SMD to be visible. So there actually is a slot that one can come up through. Where's that at? Right there. You can see where that light's coming through right there. That comes up right there in the bottom. So I could bring that up through this little section, maybe groove a little notch into this. And what I want to do is the figure goes right in that little square with the hole in it. Right behind them is a flat platform right there. I want to glue the SMD facing up so it's glowing up into the cabin. And it'll be behind the figure so you won't see it and you won't see any direct light shining onto it. But it will illuminate the figure and illuminate the rest of the interior, which is kind of cool. Uh, so at this point, I just need to go ahead and finish painting up the figure of Dave Bowman, which I got most of it done. Pretty much just his head, his face, and hair. A little bit of black, a little bit of silver around his backpack to give it some color, that sort of thing. And then, then I'll be ready to get him glued in and then put the light in and see how that looks. And if that looks good, I can go ahead and put these two together. I don't need to glue them because it's a nice snug fit. And if I ever need to take it off, it is removable. So that wouldn't be a problem. Uh, and then that'll still give me complete access underneath to do the wiring, the lighting, the photo, or the um, fiber optics for the four headlights going through for the how. And then, um, and then those will all be wired up through this piece once I get it painted white. So come along pretty good, uh, quite a bit done on it. Hopefully get this fixed up here and put together soon. And then uh, I just have to work on the idea of how to do the, the tubing coming down out of the bottom, coming over and behind the ship to plug in and, and be powered, so, all right. So I finished painting the tiny little Dave Bowman figure to go inside the ship. He doesn't really have any kind of facial features at all. It's just smooth, but he's not wearing his helmet. So I tried to go with the other colors that would stand out like his brown hair, just flesh on his, well, some buff on his face to look like a light flesh orange on his backpack, a little bits of gray and silver and black, fluorescent orange on his, his front pack there. So I used all these colors here, but just slightly dabbed them on so in the end, it's gonna give you the impression that there's a lot of detail on him. And remember too, on the inside, it's gonna be glowing red 
as a predominant color, so a lot of these are going to be washed out, but you're still going to be able to, to have a distinction between like the silver and that sort of thing. So, all right, and I just glued him on this little piece of styrene sheet temporarily so I could work with him. I can break him off and get ready to put him inside of the kit. So I glued the figure into the pod and I also glued the little SMD that I painted red right there on the back behind him. It's kind of hard to see since it's so dark. I notched out that back little corner right there and took the wire down through the bottom. Let me go ahead and turn that on and I will show you how that's going to look. All right, and there's that light lit up. And I dabbed on a little bit more clear red to make it a little deeper red. So that'll be glowing through the interior of the ship right behind the figure. So, all right, let me put that top on and I'll show you how that's going to look. All right, there we go. So you can see the red glowing behind the figure. And you're really not seeing much else of the inside other than some dark parts there and I do not have the controls lit up because the lights aren't in the bottom at the moment, but those will also be lighting up as well and adding to the effect. So, all right. And it is definitely a deeper red in real life than it looks on that image. So, all right, let me work on the other lights for the, um, for the bottom for the headlights. All right, so I'm getting the lights wired in to the pod. So it's kind of hard to see, but I have the little chip SMDs glued down into those little channels right there. I just used some CA glue with some accelerant to harden them in place. And then I have the separate wire, this thin wire here, this is going up for the red one that I showed earlier that I glued in place. So all three of those are feeding down through and they'll go through the tube that I'm gonna have and then light up the, um, light up the pod. Let me turn that on and just kind of show you so so again there's the bright white uh, cool white ones that are pretty bright they're definitely going to light up all of the um the four headlights in the front a little how on the front and then it's also going to go up through the bottom of the pod and light up the controls in front of the figure so let me go ahead and get this put in and i'll show you how that's going to look all right so I pulled all the wires down through the bottom, put the bottom in there. Let me get and turn that on. All right. So you definitely are seeing some controls in there, different colors. Try to hold that steady, sorry. Picking up red behind the figure. There's no direct lights on the front of the figure, which is fine because otherwise you're not really going to see much detail there. And I don't have the fiber optics in yet, but you can see the light glowing through where the headlights will be and also through where little how will be. Okay, just a little bit of uh, some light leak issues like right down there in the bottom right, as you can see. A little bit right down in there. Okay, but definitely looking pretty cool. I pulled out my decals that I got with the green strawberry and also with the stargazer interiors. And uh, one of them was for the interior and I put it back there on the door. It's just some yellow and some red and some, some words you can't read that will um, give it a little bit of color behind the figure. Uh, I also took a piece of, let me grab that. This is from a, um, a clear, very thin uh, Christmas ornament that I got from Hobby Lobby. And I've used it quite a bit because it gives a nice curved plastic and it's easy to cut with scissors. So I've used it a lot for different kind of curved windows or, or things of that nature. So I cut out a tiny little piece and I glued it on the inside 
there's a sizable little gap in there, so that's nice. Just tried to get some CA glue right on the edges of it so it didn't get in the middle. And there's the, there's the little window. Pod. and I painted that black around it as well just touched that up before I glued that on so okay cool so this should be ready to go to get this put on to the interior that I finished up I did a little more painting of some black around the inside of this where there were some light leaks the problem is this this roof fits on very precisely it's not a bad thing necessarily but what it does is it scrapes the paint off so it kind of exposes it and because the whole thing is in clear resin you get some light leaks so what i'm going to do instead let that finish drying I'm sorry i'm going to get put that on i'm ready to put that on i painted the little side nubs that stick through those two parts there for the sides I also painted a little bit of silver just around those little circles. The rest of the black, which is really nice, is just going to be those bits right there as I snap it on. So, okay. I don't have the bottom glued in just yet because I still have to put the fiber optics in. But, um, well, I might do that first because I thought I had to put the, the, the roof on before the fiber optics, but I really don't because I'm not putting something in for how because it's hard to do since that front piece has to slide on. So that light's coming through there pretty good. And it lines up with this little hole right here. In the center for how. So what I can do is just, it goes through all the way. I can just put some, either glue in a really tiny fiber optic from the outside only once it's the roof is on uh, but the other the other ones the four headlights i have to put the fiber optic in first and then uh mushroom it on the inside and the outside so it's all together and then do that before i put any lights in so let me let me work on that first because i can do that before i do the final uh, putting on of the roof i got some different size fiber optic from evan designs and uh, I got some 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, and one millimeter thickness. So this is what I'm using right here is the 0 0.5. Originally I had tested some, some ones I had which was 0 0.75. It fit, but it was a bit snug. So what I'm doing is, in order to get it through, it's a bit tricky because if you feed it from the outside, it goes in and it goes down at an angle and it comes out. So you can see there that I bent that just a little on the edge and that's fine because I'm gonna snip it off and I made it longer than I need it to be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna snip off that bent part and I'm gonna use a lighter to mushroom it and then I'm gonna pull it back out so it's snug on the inside. It's kind of hard to see in the inside there because it's all black. And then that, there's a little there's a little bit of an indentation in there for it. Let me get a little closer. Okay, you can see the hole where it's coming through. So once I snip this off and mushroom it, I'll pull it back through so it's in that indentation, and it won't be in the way of the part that goes in with the lights and do it with all four of them. And they all four have their own little slots in there where they're supposed to, where they're supposed to meet. And they all come together on the two sides. So when that light goes in, these two lights line up and they light them up evenly. So let me get and cut that off and show you how that's gonna work. All right, so I snipped off that bent part that I needed to get it through that angle. And I mushroomed it. You can see right there with this lighter. As long as it's a little far out, just get it really close to the flame, but don't put the flame on the actual piece. So you can see that that's nice and mushroom. So let me pull that back out and I'll show you how that fits.
All right, there we go. So I mushroomed it. And it's, it's really nice. Just get it really close, but not too close to the model. And it, it just rounds it off right down into that little opening, which is really easy to do. So let me pop that light in there, and I'll show you how that's going to work. All right, there we go. So you can see it's that upper left one. It's nice and bright. The other one's kind of showing bright, too, if you shine it in a certain way. But you'll notice how it picks up that light a whole lot better than the one on the right side. Both are lit up, but it doesn't have the fiber optic to carry the light where it needs to be. So that looks pretty cool. So that, that headlight is done. So I just need to go through and do the other four and then uh, and those will be all set. All right, so I got the roof put onto it. I didn't glue it in place. I just stuck it on because it's on there snug. It isn't coming loose. I don't have the bottom glued in just yet or touched up until I get everything where I want it to be. I put the, um, the side muffs on. And that worked out pretty good with the black parts. Just a tiny bit of touch up on a few of them where some of the paint rubbed off as I was forcing it through. But a clever concept for sure. I really like that. So those look pretty cool. Obviously, I showed from the previous stills, I got all of the fiber optics in for the headlights. And I put a little piece in for how and a little bit of red on it. I might have to touch up just a little bit around that again, still some of the red bled around it. So let me turn that on. All right, there we go. So we got the four headlights, really nice. It's a little bit of light coming through those two pieces there for the arms, but those will be blocked off so you won't see those. You can see the little how there. It doesn't look quite red in the image. It's kind of hard because if I put more red on it, it tends to wash it out. So I think it's going to look good. It looks better in person. And then, of course, the interior and the controls. Looking pretty sweet. All right, so just a little more touch up on that as far as some of the silver parts and then put on uh, the decals on the back. You can see that one right there at the bottom. And then you have that little teeny piece right there that goes on the side of it as far as putting those on the back door of the pod. All right, so I'm going to try to paint this tiny little figure in frame, and hopefully I have it in frame. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with some light gray. And I'm going to paint the boots. Really not too many colors on this. Obviously, I already painted it yellow. And I already took some black and painted the little visor dark. I may put uh, some to me, a smoke over that just to give it a little bit of uh, a little darker look. So... I mean, a little glossier look. All right, so. Now, the only thing with him, the trouble with him is that he's fully visible other than where the, the claws are going to be holding him. So you're going to... I'm going to have to paint the whole thing, obviously. Um, the Dave figure, you can't see the back of him. You really can't make that many features of him inside the, inside the uh, pod. But him, you can see completely. Very cool little design in, in this 3D printed figure. They did a really good job of getting the pose down correctly. This whole pot is just amazing how they engineered and designed it. Okay, so there's the boots. Alright, try for a second to get this cleaned up. 
Next thing I want to do, let me go ahead and get his, the front of his, his air pack and I'm using fluorescent red, which is really orange. All right, now I can't get the back of it right now because I'm holding the little nub with these, with this piece. So I'll get that last of all once I do everything else. And I want to paint this first because there are some black straps that come off of it that go up to his shoulders and really down to his waist. So I'm going to be able to paint those afterwards. Okay. All right. Before I do chrome silver, let me do the black. I'm just using flat black. So almost a dry brush, just the merest of paint. Hope this is in frame. Right, just to kind of give the idea of some straps on him. Okay, I'm just going to do some, to me, a smoke. I often use this to look like a, a tinted visor, that kind of thing, because it's a uh, translucent gray. Okay, it's going to be really, really careful. it on the visor. There we go. Just to give it a little shine. But to keep it dark. Again, this is just like a, almost a dry brushing. Okay, that's better. Okay. All right, so now I want to go ahead and do the chrome silver. finer the better. And there actually is a bit of a lip around the top of his boots, which is nice. So that helps to see where to put the paint. Sorry. 
ini I have to look at some stills I'm not sure I'm pretty sure he's gonna be facing up but I gotta look at some stills and see how he was positioned in the pods claws Just a tiny little bit around his wrists. Just to get the slightest impression. Some metal there. I think I got a little bit of black on his, his right arm there, his right hand. Must have been when I painted his, uh, his visor. I'll have to touch it up with some yellow. Okay, so not too bad. Put a little bit on the, uh, little pack here to give it a look like it's got some controls. Okay, right, there we go. So let me um, cut off that back part and then I'll just do the, um, the back pack and then he'll be all set. All right, and here is the finished Frank Pohl figure. I realized I hadn't put the silver around his helmet collar, so I went ahead and put that on there. And uh, I slipped the support off the back, painted his backpack orange for a little bit of silver on it, just to give it some, some character. And I did watch a still, he is facing up. Now there's two different positions. He's in this position when he first gets picked up in the claws. When we see him, you know, when Dave's trying to get back in the ship and asking how to open the pod bay doors, suddenly his arms and legs became kind of straight and he's positioned in the, in the claws a little more neatly, but he's gonna be like this. And, uh, and it looks like the claws are straight out like these two right here and holding him straight out in front of the pod. So I'm gonna use those. I also put decals on the back of the pod, as I showed in my still. Which had some cool little character, the little explosive bolts on the door, whatever that little section is over there. I still wanna put some uh, solve set on that just to hold those in place. All right, so the pod's pretty much complete. A few touch-ups, a few light leaks that I need to paint with some black and then some, some white. But other than that, it's all pretty well set up. Let me put those claws in there. I'm not going to glue them in permanently, but let me put them in. Put, uh, put Frank in the claws and, uh, and show you the final reveal of that with the light. All right, and there he is in the claws. Oh, sorry. Try to hold it by the paw instead of the wire which is flexible okay so there he is he fits kind of nicely in the claws you can see how his helmet just kind of goes right in between his one arm goes above the claw and his feet on the other one so all right, let me go ahead and turn those lights on and show you how that looks with the lights. 
All right, there we go. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. No, Dave, forget about it. Damn it. Let me turn off my light here and see if that looks a little better. Yeah, there you go. All right. You can see a surprisingly good amount on the interior of that pod, which is really cool. I really like how they made that and, and made a figure inside of it. That's really, really sweet. All right. So this is pretty much done other than permanently attaching the Frank figure and the claws and then putting the tube down for the wiring into the kit. So I will save that for the next video. call this complete. I think it looks really, really awesome. <laughs>